And next up is Azeta Farma and CEO Mia Lundblad. Welcome, Mia. Thank you very much. Yes, so I'm going to present RCD Pharma. Um, and we are a new company and our vision is to provide new patent protected drugs for the treatment of respiratory or chronic respiratory diseases in order to improve uh, and reduce the, uh, the improve the quality of the li uh, life of the patients but also then reduce the suffering for the patients and also aiming at uh, modifying the underlying disease and in the end hopefully then uh, prolong the survival of the patients uh, as I said, we are a new company, but we have a long history. Uh, we are currently a subsidiary of uh, Respiratorius, and the projects that we are focusing on have been previously developed by Respiratorius. Um, and we also have uh, our chairman, Ingmar, who has been with Respiratorius for, I think, more than 15 years, and he has a good knowledge and understanding of our projects and with focus on, on our respiratory disease projects. I myself have, I have also been with Respiratorius for almost one and a half years, focusing on the project I will tell you a little bit more shortly. And we also have a board with a long uh, history and with, uh, within the pharmaceutical industry at various positions. So coming back to what we are focusing on uh, and what we are doing, as I said, we are, uh, we are developing uh, drugs for the treatment of respiratory diseases, especially chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. And that is a disease uh, that uh, is caused by noxious uh, particles, especially uh, cigarette smoke and air pollution. Um, and that causes a constant or an inflammation of the airways, uh, which then causes a constriction of the airways and uh, mucus production. So in the end, patients will experience uh, cough and uh, uh, breathing uh, problems. And also, while the disease progresses, they will experience tiredness and they will have difficulties performing their daily activities. Um, and it will have an, a great impact on their daily life. And it's a causes a great suffering for these patients and it also decreases their life expectancy. And it's a quite common disease. Uh, you can see here that it's the disease w that is the third most common cause of death worldwide, uh, only beaten, you can say, by uh, cardiovascular diseases in general and uh, cancer in general. And annually, nowadays, about 3 million people die because of COPD. And that figure is expected to increase to about 5.4 million within the coming 40 years, actually. And it's also, it's not only causing an suffering for the individual patient, but it also has an impact on society and has an economic burden on society. Um, you can see here the numbers of the costs for different diseases where, again, cardiovascular diseases makes a big a part here, but COPD is actually also uh, accounting for a large cost here, uh, listing the uh, direct annual costs in the EU countries. And the direct costs, you can also double that number, taking also into account the indirect costs of loss of productivity and early retirement. Um, so, and that, that number and that cost uh, that we see here actually can make up a, to almost 6% of the total healthcare budget in uh, some of the EU countries. So, as I said, there is a great impact on, on the patient and on society. So, what are uh, the current treatment options for these patients? There are a lot of treatments available and also uh, research is ongoing. But actually, what I can say for the last 20 years, all the new approved drugs have actually been targeting more or less the same receptors and the same pathways and mechanism of action. And those available drugs, uh, they prevent and reduce the symptoms, but they really don't uh, target the underlying disease and they don't cure the disease. 
And in addition, uh, some of these drugs, they are associated with safety concerns and some of them also lose effect over time. So there is actually quite a substantial need for new treatments with new mechanisms of action. So our CD Pharma, what are we doing? We are actually having our uh, lead candidate, our drug candidate, RCD405, which has demonstrated both anti-inflammatory properties and uh, bronco or airway dilating effects based on a different mode of action compared to the drugs that are currently available. In addition, uh, we also have our substance, the RCD405, uh, that has a good physical chemical properties in order to formulate it so that it can be used as an inhaled drug. Um, drug development, as you know, it's uh, quite an extensive and long process and we are relatively early still in, in, the, in this process, but we have accomplished a lot during the last year. And um, we have, for example, completed um, and performed our safety studies in vitro without any critical findings. We have also performed and uh, finalized our pharmacology studies uh, where we have then investigated the uh, effect in tissues from animals and humans, then demonstrating this uh, dilating effect. And we have also uh, documented and demonstrated this anti-inflammatory properties that we see with RCD405. Uh, currently, we are actually performing our toxicology studies. We have initiated those. Uh, and they are ongoing in animals. Uh, they are consisting of several sub-studies and they are quite long in time. Actually, the last part consists of a four-week repeated dosing in uh, two different animal species. So they are ongoing. And then we have also uh, established our production process of our compound RCD405. Uh, and we are also currently looking at how we can uh, then formulate it uh, together with excipients and with the required dose into a suitable inhalation device. So this is the activities that are, have been performed or are actually on ongoing. Uh, as I said, uh, that it's a long process and there are activities remaining before we can start dosing uh, humans and start uh, entering into the clinical phase. So there are a few activities there left that we need to uh, finalize and complete. And of course, the main thing right now is to uh, progress and then finalize the toxicology studies in animals and then eventually evaluate and assess uh, the results of those. Uh, we also need to ensure this optimal formulation of our drug so that it can be used in the appropriate doses that we need with the excipients that are needed for an inhalation, and then also using a suitable device there. Um, and then in the end, before we can start the uh, dosing of the patients, we need, of course, to prepare and initiate uh, the production of the drug in, in, a, in a device. And last but not least, we also then need to compile all the documentation that is needed before we can submit to the regulatory authorities in order to get an approval to start a phase one or first in human trial. So all in all, we have accomplished a lot uh, just during the last year. Uh, there are some uh, remaining ap activities, but we are quite confident that we, with RCD405, will add to the current treatment options that there al already is, but with an improved and a benefit for the patients with improved quality of life, uh, reduced suffering, and also with a benefit uh, for the society. So with that, I will conclude my presentation. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mia. So uh, first of all, I actually wanted to ask about you as the new CEO of a new company. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background and what you bring to us, Pharma? Yes, I'm. 
I have been working now with this project, as I said, uh, for almost one and a half years, but within uh, respiratorious. Um, I have also long ex uh, experience from drug development. I've been working more than 15 years within early uh, clinical development and discovery in Denmark, for Faring and Novo Nordisk, for example. And uh, yeah, I have, a, I think, a relatively solid background and knowledge within, within this area. So in your opinion, what is the most important activities or things to do now in the beginning to build a solid development company? Yes, I think we, we are on a good path <laughs> there. Of course, we are a very small company. It's only myself being <laughs> employed right now. But I think also with our board and chairman, we have a good, I have a good support. Uh, and when needed, we can, of course, we have also a network of consultants consultants that we can get advice from and so on, but uh, yeah. And I should imagine you still have access to respirators to ask for advice or so on. How will the relationship look between between Aceda and respirators? They will now be separate companies, so they and we don't have any, I mean, benefits to <laughs> from each other uh, anymore. So uh, no, there will Two no separate be. companies. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to ask about COPD a bit because it sounds to me like that could be a condition that considering air pollution and so on that will just keep growing. Yeah, it's both ways you can say because it's also caused by cigarette smoke which in some areas countries actually declines, in other areas it increases. Uh, air pollution is also decreasing in some areas of the world but increasing in others. It's also actually caused by this open fire, maybe cooking that is in some especially low income countries. Um, so it depends on <laughs> where you're looking, but it's, it's an, it will affect more and more people also because people get older and older. Um, so depending on you how you look at the figures <laughs> and the so numbers. Leading on from that, is there any markets that are more important than others? I know you're in very early stages, yeah. but... No, I think it's it's a general. I mean, people they they suffer all over the world. So I think it's uh, it, it, we shouldn't really <laughs> discriminate any yeah, any areas no. or define them. No. no, I understand. So where do you hope to be in in a year's time then? In a year's time, I hope we can have actually started uh, our uh, human uh, dosing and. Uh, have advanced to the clinical side of it. Um, of course, everything, I mean, it depends all on, or a lot, uh, not all, but a lot on the toxicology studies that we are currently performing. Um, but um, that's my hope that we can be at that stage. Well, you certainly have a very exciting journey ahead of you. Yes, <laughs> indeed. And thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about it. Yeah, thank you very much for letting me come.